hello there. <laughs> I hope everyone's good today. I'm feeling particularly great. So uh, it's nice to be here. And thanks for joining me again for one of our Facebook Lives. Just a reminder, always, I start off with a So Confident reminder. August 1st was the date that we released the August project, which is the Pieced Eureka Top. And we've had great response for this. We have a few of these kits left called Havana. So if you need some fabric and want to not have to think about which fabrics to combine from your stash, feel free to order a kit and then uh, refer to your prep letter for preparation. And the August video will be released August 20th. I think that might be on a Friday, but I'm not sure about that. I probably shouldn't have said that because it may be any day of the week. I'm not sure. I think it is a Friday, actually. Of course, you can sign up for the monthly uh, program, and you can still sign up for the yearly program as well. Yesterday, I came to work, and Erin had on her fabulous white knit combo woven knit. No, 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 two different. Is it woven and knit, or is it two knits? Yeah, woven and knit. So white Memphis dress. She looks so fabulous in this dress. You may have seen her a while back on a Facebook Live. And she had on her suede Birkenstocks. And of course, I took a second look, a double take, because I may be the only person on the planet who does not own a pair of Birkenstocks. But true to Erin, she's totally in style, because according to the Wall Street Journal, big article last Saturday on why the Birk endures. Birkenstocks have been around forever, and designers such as Marc Jacobs, Perenza Schuler, Jill Sanders, Celine, they've all had their hand in designing the year's Birkenstock. And the fact that the company, the same company that owns Louis Vuitton and Dior, that big conglomerate, they have the controlling interest now in Birkenstock. So we know that Birkenstocks are going to be around forever in some form and fashion, and they are considered a fashion shoe. People love them for their orthopedic value, but they are clearly part of fashion. So I'm just here to tell you that if you don't have a pair of Birkenstocks to wear with your dress, your summer dress, or as they describe in this article, wear it to your wedding, both sexes, the groom and the bride, wore Birkenstocks to their wedding, you're right in. So just a little, today's tidbit. <laughs> so today I have on the uh, Memphis, I don't have on the Memphis, I have on the Florence shirt. I have always loved the Florence shirt. I, uh, I've, I don't know, I, I have several of them. And I wear them year-round, actually. I have one that I can wear in the wintertime that's a little heavier, and I have lightweight ones. And one of the things that I like about it is that there are times when I really want to invest myself in the making of a great shirt. It has a collar and a stand, which I happen to like to make. Not everybody does. It has a separate button placket, not just a turned back facing or self-facing. It actually has an attached placket, which I think gives a nice structure to a garment. It does have this interesting tuck. Now the front and the back of this shirt are cut out in the same way. But we do have a couple of lines on the front where you can sew them together and the tuck comes to the right side and so you get then this little swoop and drape at the side, which I particularly like. It changes the shape of a standard shirt. It has a set-in sleeve, so this line is at your shoulder. So it's fitted through the shoulders and the bust, which I like, and then lots of space below that. It's ended with a narrow cuff and a, a placket, a vent. The back has a yoke. And then this is an applied placket. There's no seam here, but this is a narrow placket with buttons that are non-functioning, but it just adds a nice detail. So this is really a garment that I, I think is fun to make, 
it's not a one night project of course but if you like to make shirts this is one that you should probably invest in and yes there's some fitting and some shoulder work to be done if you're narrow shouldered you'd want to make a, sh a narrow shoulder adjustment forward thrust sloping all of that but beyond that it's mainly just fitting the bust and then letting the rest of it happen and of course deter uh, determining your sleeve length well as you can see I roll up my sleeves but a while back I made I think maybe you've all seen this I made a modified Liberty shirt and actually this is a neckline that I took from our mix it shirt and I applied it to the Liberty but the Liberty is a different shape than the Florence. It does have side seams that are thrust forward, so they're rotated to the front, and you have this front section and then a back section that is fairly wide, and it rotates back to the front. But I, I shortened the sleeve from the normal Liberty. This is the Liberty as we know it. It has a round collar, it's buttoned up more towards the neck, and the sleeves are long. The sleeve has a vent at the one seam, and then you can either leave this little cuff down, or you can roll it up like this, and I generally roll this up. But for summer, I wanted to kind of reinvent the neckline, and I also wanted to shorten the sleeve. So I like a sleeve that actually covers my upper arms and this length, which happens to be 17 inches, just seemed to be perfect, especially in a lightweight linen fabric for summer for my modified Liberty top. So I decided to take this shortened Liberty sleeve and put it on my Florence top, Florence shirt. So this is the Florence. The only thing I did, if you're not into all the little details, I eliminated the back yoke. I eliminated the applied band. So that takes away, I don't know how many buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six buttons. But everything else is the same. Collar and stand, the placket, the pocket, the tuck but it does have a shorter sleeve. So there's something about this that feels a little more like summer. And then I made this in one of these Raimi fabrics, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. But again, we have the vent and we have the cuff and it's just a nice transition for a, a summer shirt. Well, how do you do that? What if you like a sleeve from one pattern and you want to use a sleeve from another pattern? How do you do that? So here's how you do it. So the black line here represents the tracing of the Florence sleeve. It has the little vent opening and a little tuck and there would be a cuff normally added to the bottom of this. The blue line is the tracing of the Liberty sleeve and you can see that it's a very different sleeve in terms of sleeve cap, width, the Florence sleeve is wider, the Liberty sleeve is narrower. Both are set in sleeves, but it's just a difference in how they've been designed. So since I determined that I wanted a 17 inch finished length, and I did that by just putting a tape measure at my shoulder and measuring about where a, a sleeve rolls up for me. So on my Florence shirt pattern, I drew a line from my dot, which is the finished height of the sleeve, down to 17 inches. So you see that's the black outline of the sleeve, the Florence sleeve. So this green line represents that 17 inches where I want it finished. So I took the Florence sleeve pattern and placed it over the copied Liberty pattern and I lined up the finished end of the, Flor the Liberty pattern on that green line. So that's my common line of where I started. What I didn't want to do was have to change arm curves, 
sleeve heads, all of that. So I wanted this sleeve to still fit into the Florence shirt, so I retained the original sleeve cap and width of the sleeve. And all I did was take a French, um, a hip curve, which is my favorite tool, you know, and I drew a nice gentle connecting line from the original width of the sleeve to the finished width of the finished length of the Liberty shirt. And then I traced the deep hem allowance of the Liberty hem. And to make that vent, there's a little dot that's about two and a half inches above this finished line that's important to record as well. So I have basically the top of the Florence sleeve in terms of shape of this arm's eye or sleeve cap and width, but I have the bottom of the Liberty sleeve and I have the length that I want it. So there you go. That's easy. But this is the key, keeping the sleeve so it'll fit in the Florence. So that's just basically copying a detail of a cuff. Pretty darn easy, really. Of course, you have to have two patterns to do that. <laughs> you have to have the Florence pattern and you have to have the Liberty pattern. Although you could probably create something, you know, if you're, if you're of a mind. It, for me, it's just so much easier to have both patterns to work with to begin with. So I want to talk to you a minute about a special project that we had a couple of years ago. Uh, Aaron and I are both K-Staters, and we're proud of that fact, Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas. And we're both, we both graduated from the same department, uh, Department of Clothing and Textiles. Now, Aaron had the privilege of working with Dr. Sherry Haar, who is part of the Department of Clothing and Textiles at Kansas State. And she is really well known, worldwide well known. She actually has a garden in the front yard of her home in Manhattan, Kansas, because she specializes in um, printing textiles using slow methods and natural dye stuffs. She's so famous that uh, over the past 20 years, she's she, and this is slightly old information by this time, two or three years old, uh, she's been uh, either the, uh, the lead designer or a second designer in over 40 international exhibits of naturally dyed fabrics. She's co-authored or authored 12 publications. She has two patents. She's received numerous awards for design, teaching, and research. So she's, she's pretty cool. But she's a friend of ours. And we asked her to do a garment for us a couple of years ago, and she chose the Florence shirt. Now, I don't have the shirt with me. She has it. And I wish I had thought of it earlier than yesterday. But this is a picture of the shirt that she made for us in the Florence shirt. And what I liked about it was she added some colorful little details of bias strips. She created a really interesting cuff that turns back and has a little edging on it. Uh, she has little patches of this color on the back. And these fabrics were hand dyed. And so we did a tutorial with her in mind called Naturally Dyed Details. That's about a 30 page tutorial that we still have on our website and we're offering today at a really good price to you. But she talks about her inspiration. She talks about some of the dye stuffs that she uses, some of the natural plants that she grows, and how her processes of dyeing. Uh, if you're into some natural dyes, you'd be interested in researching her, taking a quick look at that tutorial. She also presents some technique books in this tutorial that she really likes, uh, some of her favorite books that she uses if you're interested in natural dyes. And since she knows I love the color yellow and gold, she left me some of her beautiful fabrics that she dyed. And she's labeled all of them, some of which I understand and some not. But uh, this is called Trifold Cosmos, Silk and Cotton.
I haven't, I, you know, there's sometimes a piece of fabric, you just have to, you're waiting for the white th right thing. This is woad, pansy, gallardia, cosmos, silk dupioni. And she did some solids for me as well. Here's another uh, one that's a little bit um, batik like. Again, Cosmos. See, I don't know what Cosmos is, but probably if I'd read the tutorial again, she would have explained it. And then just some wonderful solids in beautiful colors that she left me. So I'm gearing up to make something in a combination of all these fabrics, silks and cottons and so forth. But I think you might enjoy that tutorial. So this particular Florence, oh, I want to show one more thing because I have to brag on K-State. Um, first of all, she, Sherry is one of the construction, apparel construction teachers, and she's chosen the Florence shirt for her students to make as their shirt project at Kansas State. And it's been interesting to see what they've done to uh, this garment. Uh, many of them turn this into a, a, a pretty standard shirt. They cut it off, they do a shirt tail hem. That's what I like about this pattern. It doesn't have to be a long, full garment. You can use the top part of this, which has all the elements of a classic shirt, and you can change the bottom of that to be more of a, just a classic shirt. I don't know if you've tried to find a, a classic shirt pattern lately, but they're few and far between. And maybe that's, maybe there are more on the market today. It's been a while since I've really looked, but the last time I looked, there really weren't very many. So this Florence has the um, capability of being that for you. So this is the garment that the uh, Kansas State University students use in their class. And they also used our e-skirt pattern, which is a, a wrap skirt. And the, the class, one of the classes in natural dyeing at Kansas State, they, the students dyed their fabrics, and then they had an auction, online auction, where people could buy the finished skirts. So I bought this one from one of the students, and unfortunately, I don't know who made this. I can't tell the student's name. She didn't put her name in it. But once a year, there's an auction online, and whenever it happens again, I'm going to let you know about it because it's a fundraiser for Kansas State University's apparel program. So that's a, another piece of hand-dyed fabric that a student made from Dr. Har's class. And the e-skirt, which is our pattern. Okay, so um, this particular Florence is made in Ramey fabrics. And a few weeks ago on Facebook Live, I talked about Ramey. Ramey is a flax-like fiber, meaning it has similar properties to linen but it's definitely a different plant. And it's been around for centuries, and we've ma been making textiles out of it for centuries. It used to be a pretty expensive process, apparently, to make Ramey into textiles, but now there are new generations of it and it's less expensive, so we're seeing a lot of it. And it has a lot of similarities to linen. It's lightweight. It's not particularly transparent, although it is it's not handkerchief weight, but it's not a medium weight either. It's just kind of in between. One of the things I really like about it is that when you wash it and dry it, it becomes very soft. Some linens never change. Some get soft, but some of them have so much of a uh, finish on them, particularly the less expensive ones that you buy, they look like linen because they have a finish on it. And once you wash it, the finish goes away and they become limp and dull and, and not a beautiful fabric anymore. But Ramey keeps the characteristics that it started with in terms of quality, but it is now very soft and really comfortable to wear. So I wanted to show you some Ramey fabrics. We've just have, first of all, do you like the explosion of color and pattern we have today? I mean, can you even see me or, or see anything? Because we have so much going on. But, We've, we've been purchasing a lot of beautifully printed Ramey fabrics. So I thought I'd go through the ones that we have today that have just come in. Well, we have one or two we've had for a little while, but most of them are brand new. And we even have a whole slew of them 
in, that just came in the door this week that we haven't even photographed yet. So we're going to have more and more on the website all the time. It used to be that we couldn't find these kinds of fabrics, but all of a sudden we have a resource for them, and I happen to be really fond of them, so we're going to be carrying them. So let's talk about fabrics. All right, let's put this to the side for the moment. I'll start at the bottom. All right, so we have this nice abstract blue and cream and gold and slight green but it, it's this looks like to me you know watercolor abstract painting very pretty then we have this which I'm pretty crazy about this has a very Asian flavor to it unfortunately it's upside down on the bolt here but it has these fish, which we've been calling goldfish and koi and who knows what they are, but sort of a pen and ink style drawing of a fish. And then this soft watercolor uh, motifs for the, the floral pieces, which I, I'm having a, a moment of, I can't think what that flower is. Then we have a more abstract, uh, not abstract, a uh, more defined flower, uh, which almost looks like um, a it was a photograph that's been projected onto fabric, but beautiful spring and summer colors. Now this is printed so that the flowers go sideways from selvage to selvage. So this is a fabric that I would cut on the cross grain. And that's one of the nice things about this fabric is it doesn't matter which way you cut it. You can cut it on the cross grain, you're going to get the same drape on the cross grain that you're going to get on the lengthwise grain. Here are two watery, I call them watery because they have blurred lines, florals. This one in lavenders and fuchsias with deeper purples. And this one in tones of gray with a hit of green. And we'll start at the top over here. Th these, I think, some of these can go a little bit more into uh, fall winter depending on the climate that you live in I love this 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 has um, this looks like architecture to me or a wall or even um, not graffiti in the sense of words but definitely abstract street art sort of flavor to it in gray and white and then this strong red this one you can probably look at this one and think maybe you could cut this one on the cross grain as well. It's hard to know, but there are these strong horizontal lines that are sort of branch-like. So in my opinion, this is another one I think you would cut on the cross grain. You see how drapey these are already. And then by the time you wash them, they're even drapier. This one you've seen, we've made this in the gardenia top and dress, and we still have kits available for this fabric, plus we have the yardage available as well. Here's another abstract piece that has a, a leaf type feeling to it, and yet you could also just consider it splashes of color. But to me it kind of looks like fall leaves or something like that, I don't know, maybe I'm <laughs> hoping for fall because it's so hot out today. And this one, we don't have very much of this one left, uh, but Deb made a pair of pants out of it, which I'm going to show you. She took the Hudson pants and shortened them and put some panels on the bottom just to create some detail, and then did a contrast waistband and pocket, which I think, well, she added the pockets actually to the Hudson. She took the West End pockets, West End pockets from the pockets from the West End pants and put them on the Hudson pants. And then she shortened them, and I think they're so cute. This has been washed, so there's no harshness to the fabric whatsoever. You know, sometimes linen can be a little bit prickly. Not so with this fabric. So, we probably have, I don't know, just a little bit left of that. So we're going to have to watch that when, uh, if you all are interested in it and ordering it.
So those are our fabrics. I pulled out one black fabric, which is the only color we carry in this particular fabric. This is rayon and spandex. So it has some stretch to it on the cross grain. Super drapey, and it makes a fantastic pair of pants. Summer, probably year round really, has a nice soft feel to it so I can see it working with the Ramies because there's a relationship in how it drapes and how it feels and working together. So you can see how drapey it is. And it's nice and wide, so you don't need much fabric to make a pair of pants. You can make the Hudson's, the West Ends, just about any pant that we have. Because it has the spandex, you could make the getaway jeans out of it as well. All right, do we have any questions? Um, yes, I think I'm going to get closer on one of those fabrics because uh, somebody said it looked like skulls. So I wanted, oh. to, I wanted to show them that it was more Maybe I should floral. take it off and uh, hold it upright. So they can see the print as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. Why did I do that? Does that help? Yes. So they're, they're flowers. They're definitely flowers. Um, so hopefully you can see that a little better now. Let's do it the other way, see if... Does that change anything? <laughs> uh, no, now the flowers look like they're... Uh, Upside down? I can't tell. <laughs> no, yeah. they look like they're up. They're up now. So okay. I think that's better. All righty. <laughs> okay. And then the black fabric that you showed, is that a knit or a woven? This is a woven. It is rayon with spandex. So it's a rayon woven, but it has, I don't know, let's see how much spandex there is in it. 3%. So about that much, about that much stretch. So in about four inches, it probably, you know, it's less than 25% stretch, but just enough for comfort, I think. Very washable. Can you use these Ramies um, on the bias? You can use the Ramies on the bias, but it depends on the pattern. I don't, I don't choose to use them on the bias unless. I need to for some design detail. But there's no reason why you can't. You know, I think you can use them any direction you want to. A couple comments on that they like skulls, so that's good to oh. know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah. Uh, um, what kind of topper shirt does Deb wear with those pants? You know, I've seen Deb wear the cottage shirt with this. She has a couple of Eureka tops in wovens in the viscose linen. Sometimes she'll contrast the sleeves on the Eureka. What else have I seen her in? Oh, she has a swing tee in kind of a gold color. I believe she made a cottage using this dotted for either trim or all of it. I almost can't remember. But cottage mm -hmm. is pretty, pretty common. Mm -hmm. She likes the cottage and she likes the Eureka. Okay. Um, what's the difference between Ramy and hemp? It's a different plant. Well, I'll tell you what, we're just look this up. I have my trusty little dictionary <laughs> right here. So Ramy is a fine flax light like bast fiber. And hemp is also a bast fiber obtained from the hemp plant. So two different plants, very similar. Hemp, linen, and ramy are similar family. That word bast is a word, let's see if they even have that in here. Bast 
fiber, soft fibers collected from the vascular tissue of certain plants and used in textile manufacturing. Flax, jute, hemp. Ramey. I like this little book, by the way. Whenever I have questions just like that, this is my little go-to kind of pocket, uh, look it up. If, it doesn't, if it's not in here, I go to my Kansas State University Dictionary of Textiles. Um, what is the name of that? Can you, what's it the called? The Fashion A to Z, Fashion A to Z, an illustrated dictionary. Okay. Can you make the e-skirt maxi length? Absolutely. In fact, the e-skirt in our pattern is a lot longer than this. I don't know about a lot longer, but it's probably a good four or five inches longer than this skirt. Mm -hmm. But yes, this would be a great skirt for Maxi. Mm -hmm. So I think it hits more like midi length now. I mean, the traditional pattern. Yeah. And then, so you could just lengthen it a couple inches beyond yeah. that. Yeah. They say Cosmos is a flower. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And can you repeat, um, Dr. Harz, can you, her information? There was a couple questions about her. Um, yes, Dr. Har, that's, first of all, um, H-A-A-R. I know you can Google her. It's Sherry, S-H-E-R-R-Y, Professor of Apparel and Textiles at Kansas State University. Uh, repeat information about her? I think just that. Just, just, her, just that, yeah. Her name Dr. And... Sherry Har. Here's a picture mm -hmm. of her and her name. Okay, I had a couple questions about your sleeve All right. alterations. Um, so don't, you don't mess with the sleeve head at all? No. <laughs> nope, original sleeve, sleeve head of the Florence. Original width. And any way to lengthen a cap sleeve? Do you mean make it higher? I'm wondering if they mean like a cap sleeve, like a short sleeve. Oh, lengthen a cap sleeve. Oh, sure. Absolutely. If, if this, let's say this sleeve ended right here, you would simply measure to the length that you want and lengthen it. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's easy. Okay. Any length sleeve can be changed. I, I can't think of, I'm sure there's some circumstance somewhere where it wouldn't happen, but Long sleeves can become short, short sleeves can become long, anywhere in between, wide, narrow, but this is the fundamental area that needs to stay in order to fit into the original garment. You don't want to mess with this if you don't have to. That's why when we do narrow shoulder adjustments and other adjustments, we never alter the arm's eye shape or distance. Okay, is there a way to change the cottage, cottage sleeve pattern to make it longer? Oh, no. I mean, you can make the band of the cottage sleeve wider, but because of the way it's attached to the garment, it's basically a rectangle that you're putting sleeves on. I wouldn't do that. Are there any other colors on order, any cooler colors on order? Cooler so. like, like really hip or, or <laughs> I think cooler as in like the hue of the cooler like, um, I mean, I think the like goldfish blue is. cooler. Can we be more specific? Like that mentioned that she can't do the oranges. Okay. Um, I consider, maybe I'm wrong. I consider this, these cool for the most part. I think the top one with the pink. Yeah, this is cool. Even this is cool, even though it has orange in it. Cool, cool. These are cool colors, reds and blacks, aren't they? Red, I don't know. Uh, the answer is I, uh, I don't know what's coming in. I, mean, I can't remember what just came in, to tell you the truth. There may, we have, several sitting down there waiting to be photographed and there very, very, very well may be a lot of um, 
variations in colors. Um, you know, a lot of these are just, I think, natural colors from nature. And, you know, you have a lot of variety when you do that from reds, yellows, oranges. Those are all in nature. Okay. Sorry, looking for other questions. If you guys okay. have any other questions here. <laughs> okay. Uh, a few comments, though, but they weren't questions. All right. Um, back in April, there was a Facebook Live with the Fillmore pattern. I don't see that pattern on the website anymore. Has it been discontinued? The Fillmore pattern, thanks to that Facebook Live, sold out, and we do not have it on order at this time. So at this moment, it's discontinued. Now, that doesn't mean we won't bring that pattern back as a download. Sometimes we'll do that. But right now, we don't have it. When will the, a pant be a part of So Confident 2021? September is pants. Next one. Now, we had pants, you know, in February. And we'll have pants in September. Um, let's see. That's all I see. Okay. All right. Well, is there any other specials or any oh, other? Oh, the specials. Talk about our yes, I should talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of the fabrics are on sale. The patterns that are on sale this week are the Florence shirt, the Liberty shirt, and the E skirt. Now, the Liberty and the Florence are print only, correct? Yes. And the E skirt is download only. And then the tutorials on sale, we have anatomy of the sleeve, which talks about sleeve caps and, and setting in a sleeve. Basically, it's a how-to on how to set in a sleeve. Then we have this really extensive tutorial called Fine-Tune Your Sewing Skills. I've forgotten how many pages it is, probably 60 pages or so. And it's sort of all the tips and tricks that we talk about a lot around here. It's called sort of... Uh, concisely put into one tutorial. I think that's something you would just keep in your library of information and refer to all the time. And then this naturally dyed details, the one about Sher Dr. Sherry Har, is on special for five dollars for the next week. So that's a pretty good special. But it's it's a fun thing to look at, and and I think you'll learn something from her, and it's very inspirational. Her story and also what she does to the Florence shirt. Okay. I have one quick question okay. um, about the fabrics. Um, what pants pattern would you use? Well, I'm wearing the pencil pants. And I think if you're wearing the Florence with this kind of volume that you want maybe a slimmer look. So pencil pants, Helix pants, Hudson pants would be getaway pants, Madrid pants. Those would be our slim pant selections. And what pants would you make if you're using the Ramey fabric? If I'm using the Ramey fabric for pants, I would make the Hudson's, the Madrid's, Hudson and Madrid's. But like if you, if you were just using them for like, you could do the West Ends, you could do like, what oh, would you use oh, like oh, if oh, you're oh, just oh. buying the Ramey? Oh, if I were just making these in pants? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. West Ends all over the place. Mm -hmm. West Ends and Hudson's would be my choice for a loose, airy, summer pant. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't quite. Well, Chesney's too. Right. Yeah. Valencia's. Um, Valencia's, yes. Mm -hmm. With the Valencia's, you don't have a side seam, so that makes it super easy to make. Yeah. Okay, that's all the questions. All right. Well, I'll see you next week. Thanks so much.